something. So this project here, this i3 build, has been going on for such a long time now that I decided I have to free up my table. It's just too much stuff here and I have other projects waiting. So why don't we just finish this project right now, right now. So there you have it. The i3 Mark III S Plus is finally assembled. I didn't do it on a live stream. I wanted to save some time. Sorry for that. But we're definitely going to do now some testing on this printer to see whether it starts printing correctly, if it can print a Benchy, and then we should be good. So the build is done. This is really my first i3 Prusa printer. I'm still a little bit anxious to turn it on because I've never turned it on before and I'm curious what's gonna happen if we can make it or run and print for the first time. So I can't really wait to start. However, I need to change one thing before we do this. So much better now. This feels way more appropriate for what we're gonna do today because we'll learn something, we're gonna make something, and then hopefully we don't have to repeat everything, but probably we have to repeat a few things. Plugging in the power cable. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Original Prusa i3, Prusa Research. <laughs> Hi, I am your original Prusa i3 printer. Would you like me to guide you through the setup process? Yes, I want that. Insert the filament, but do not load it into the extruder. That's one spool of filament that they delivered with the printer. It's unfortunately not an original Prusa spool. There, they saved some money. But anyways, we have some filament to test this out. So I'm gonna push this in. Sensor verified, remove the filament now, okay? Self-test start. So it's doing its self-test now, probably doing all of the sensors and fans, and then hopefully we're gonna get printing very soon. Actually, I've never seen a printer doing such a calibration before, so this is probably very Prusa specific, and it's taking quite a long time, actually. Please place steel sheet on heat bed. Let's do that. Which one should we use? The steel sheet with texture or... I, I prefer the textured one. I got myself both the textured and the normal steel sheet just for seeing the difference. And I think for different materials, it makes sense to use different kinds of sheets. Anyways, that was kind of a package, a little bit cheaper than getting them separately. Congratulations, so we're done. Yes, it's coming out of the nozzle. We're extruding. So the printer is now preparing to do the calibration print. That is a kind of a zigzag on the surface and then we have to adjust the nozzle height so we have perfect adhesion. So the, how you're checking the distance is you're scratching the PLA with the finger and it shouldn't release. So it should stay on the surface. So here we see it's not enough pressure so we should probably increase the pressure or lower the nozzle. Double checking on this side. Also here it looks a little bit better but I would say overall a little more pressure couldn't hurt. That's done by turning the knob. So this is like bringing the nozzle down just a tiny bit. I mean, the thing is you don't want to squish it too much. And if it doesn't release that easy, then it's probably just the right distance. So it's kind of a feeling that you need to get for this. All is done, happy printing. What I would do now is flash the latest firmware to this printer and then we're gonna do a Benchy print. However, flashing the firmware to this printer isn't as easy as with other printers nowadays. Normally you would expect that you just put the firmware file on the SD card, how it works for example with the Prusa Mini which has a more up-to-date mainboard. But with this mainboard, you still have to use a USB cable, connect that to your computer and then use Prusa Slicer to update the firmware. And then it's flashing the firmware and that's Probably a matter of a minute or so. Flashing succeeded. Okay, disconnect the cable. We're ready to do the first test print. The way how this works is we're gonna insert the, the SD card on the SD card that comes with the printer. There is a bunch of example files. So let's pick the 3D Benchy. Let's kick it off. One thing that I realized pretty soon when this started is that it's probably not printing with the fastest profile available. So it says on the SD card that this is gonna take two hours, which is probably quite long for a Benchy, but very conservative settings, 0.15 millimeters. Two hours later. <sighs> okay, so this is what you get if you're leaving the printer for lunch break. <laughs> 
Let's do this one more time, but this time I'm gonna clean the surface a bit with alcohol. So after doing another calibration and making sure that the first layer really sticks super nicely cleaning the bed with alcohol, this second try looks much better. However, I've changed the print settings because I didn't want to wait another two hours. So it's printed now in 0.3 and with a faster profile. So about 15 minutes later, this Benchy print is done. So I would say let's have a look at the Benchy print quality in the close-up. So I guess we can agree that this is a pretty nice result for a first print on this printer. So I didn't tune any settings and didn't create custom profiles yet. Going down to 0.2 or 0.15 probably will give us an even better result. What I wanna do now is addressing a few of the most common questions about this printer. By the way, if you have more questions, please post them down in the comment section. I'm gonna try to answer them as soon as possible. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's gonna push it to more people. It's gonna help me grow the channel. Thank you very much very much. First question would be, would I get the kit version or the pre-built version if I had to get another one of these printers? Certainly, this was a nice build. It was an interesting experience. However, it also took eight to 10 hours. I probably would get the pre-built version if I needed more of these printers. That's up to you to choose. There's also a price difference, right? This one costs 800 as the kit version and the pre-built version, but also pre-tested in the lab of Prusa costs around 1100. Of course, that depends a little bit on how much taxes you have to pay, but that's the choice that you need to make. With this printer being in the $1,000 region anyways, it is the question, do you need this kind of printer? Does it need to be so expensive or would you buy something much cheaper? For example, like the Ender 3 V2. Like you have seen me building and upgrading this printer. However, this is a choice that you need to make because this printer isn't about 200 bucks anymore. It's probably more like six, 700 euros because of all of the upgrades and the changes that I have done. Probably at some point you will make the choice for this printer if you wanna use it more professionally and you don't have the time and you don't want to tinker around. So the Ender 3, while being at a lower entrance price, requires a lot of time invested and knowledge to get it to a point where it's comparable in quality and print results, print speed, anything that you might think of compared to the Prusa, which has been evolutionary changed and modified over time, but very carefully. So that's the choices that you need to make. What's gonna happen now with these two printers, they're gonna go back into my lab and we do more test prints to compare results between these two printers, also getting bigger prints on the Prusa done. Check out my Instagram and also the shorts that I'm gonna post here on the channel and I'm happy to see you in the next video. Bye.